All right, guys, we're going to look at solving equations now. And these can get um, into a lot of different steps. We're just going to start with some of the basics by doing one-step equations. And to do that, we're going to be using inverse operations. And what that means is that we're going to be doing operations that are the opposite of each other or that undo each other. For example, addition and subtraction are the opposite. They undo each other. I can give you three pieces of candy, addition, then to undo it, I would take away three pieces, subtraction. Also, multiplication and division are opposite operations, or they undo each other. So before we start looking at the actual examples, I want to make sure we're understanding that when we're solving in equations, it's really like balancing a scale. The two different sides of the equal sign, we've got to keep balanced. For example, in this one, we've got an x plus 1 on the left, so I can add that in here. And then we can see that it's not balanced because I still need three on the right to balance it out. But once we have both parts of the equation, then we see it balanced. So to keep it balanced as we're solving, we need to do whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other side. So we can see an example of that. If I put a minus one, I have to do it on both sides. And then we can see that it still stays balanced. So that's what we need to keep in mind while we are solving these equations. We want to keep them balanced. So on number one, I always want to isolate the variable and my variable x is over here. So I've got to decide what is happening to my x. Well, it's being subtracted by four. So the opposite or to undo that, I need to add four. And again, we want to keep this equation balanced. Think of that scale. So if I add four to one side, I have to add four to the other side as well. One's on the left and one's on the right of that equal sign. And then a minus 4 and a plus 4 make 0. So on this left side we have x plus 0, but x plus 0 is really just x. And then 16 plus 4 is 20. And then we can check our work as well. So I plug in 20 for x, 20 minus 4, is that really equal to 16? And yes it is, so we know our answer is correct. All right, number two looks a little bit different because now our variable's on the right side. So now we're gonna start on the right side. And what is happening to m? We added 17. So to undo, go backwards, we're going to subtract 17, do the opposite. And then positive and negative 17 make zero. So m plus zero is just m. And zero minus 17 is negative 17. And if I want to, I can flip this around, say m equals negative 17. It's the same answer either way. Number three, I'm going to find that variable again. Here's my h. Now the nine doesn't have a plus or minus sign in front of it. It's actually a positive nine. So actually we go back up to our vocabulary and we're looking at this. We can also think of it as a positive and negative are inverses or opposites of each other and use that to solve equations as well. So we have a positive nine. The opposite is going to be a negative nine. Again, once on each side to keep that equation balanced. 9 and negative 9 make 0, so we just have an h left on this side. And then remember integer rules, we've got negative 20 and a negative 9 makes negative 29. Now for these next few, we're going to switch over to the multiplying and dividing. So we can see that that negative 6 is right next to our y. That actually means multiplying, so this really says negative 6 times y. So the opposite of multiplying is to divide. We're going to divide by using the fraction bar as our division. Divide both sides by negative six. So when we're dividing, we want these to match or multiplying. We want them to match, we want them to cancel to be one. Negative six divided by negative six is one y. And one times anything is not gonna change that value. So instead we can just really simplify that. Instead of saying one y, we can actually just say y. And then do the division. Negative 42 divided by negative 6 is a positive 7. Number 5. Our d is actually being divided by 9. That's what that fraction means, division. So the opposite then is to multiply both sides by 9. And if you want to, you can think of this as 9 over 1. We've got 9 over 9. 9 divided by 9 is 1. So it's, again, 1d. 1 times d is really just d. And 9 times negative 11 is negative 99. And just like I did before, I can check my answer. 
So we said negative 99 divided by that 9. And yep, that is negative 11. So our answer is correct. Number 6 is a little bit different. We've got a fraction. And again, it's right next to the x, so it means 2 thirds times x. So I need to divide. So let's go aside for a second and let's review how to divide fractions. So let's just come up with an example. Let's say I have 1 half and I'm dividing it by 2 fifths. If you remember, we're going to take the 1 half, which stay the same. We would change that into a multiplication problem and then flip or take the reciprocal of that second fraction. So when we're dividing fractions, we're actually multiplying by the reciprocal. So then we can use that in our problem. I need to divide by 2 thirds. Well, then we just said that's the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So times 3 over 2 on both sides. And over here, this is going to all cancel out and become 1. And 1 times x is just x again. And the 6 I can make into a fraction by putting it over 1. And then we just multiply straight across the top and the bottom. 6 times 3 is 18. 1 times 2 is 2. Then I can see that 18 divided by 2 is 9, so I can simplify that. Number 7 with decimals. I could continue to do this the same way and divide both sides by 0 0.04, but I don't personally like decimals, but you could do it this way. I'm actually going to show you a way you can do this without the decimals to eliminate those decimals. So I'm going to look for the smallest place value so that 4 is in the hundredths place, the 2 is in the tenths, well the smaller one is the 100, so we're going to multiply both by 100. And then that moves the decimal point two places. So this becomes 4x is equal to 120. Then I can continue to solve like normal. Divide, that's the opposite of multiply before it's divide, and x equals 4 goes into 12, 3. Bring down the x to 0, so we have 30. Number 8, another fraction. So we've got to find their variable. It's being multiplied by 3 fifths. So then the opposite is to divide by 3 fifths. So dividing is multiplying by the reciprocal again. So we're multiplying by the reciprocal of 5 thirds on both sides. That's going to cancel out to be 1 times y or just y. And I multiply straight across. 1 times 5 is 5. 4 times 3 is 12. So our answer is 5 twelfths. On number 9, I've got a decimal and a fraction. So I could do either way and turn them both into fractions, both into decimals. But I recognize right away that 0.5 is the same as 1 half. So I'm going to go ahead and change that. Then I have my variable being multiplied by 1 eighth, so the opposite is to multiply by the reciprocal. And that's going to cancel out that and leave me just x. And then I'm going to go ahead and unlike number 6 where I reduce at the end, I'm going to reduce at the beginning. So I can reduce top with bottom. What number goes into both? So 2 goes into 2 once and 2 goes into 8 4 times. And then I'm going to multiply 4 times 1 is 4 over 1 times 1 is 1. And then I know that 4 divided by 1 is really just 4. So x equals 4. And then before we are done with this here, for our summary at the bottom, we are just going to write ourselves some notes. We're going to start with our variable. So sometimes we're going to start on the right side, sometimes we're going to start on the left side, depends on where our variable's at. And we're going to use inverse or opposite operations. Use the wording that makes the most sense to you. And the left hand side over here is for any notes you want to add uh, to help you remember things as you review these notes later. So for example, if you're not the best with fractions, maybe you want to make that note about fractions over here. So I would say to divide, we're going to 
multiplied by the reciprocal. And then you can also add any other notes that would help you when you're reviewing these notes to practice problems on your own later.